Adaptive subdivision in Blender. What is it? It's a modifier. What does it modify? Your mesh, obviously. The word adaptive suggests that it adapts to something, and that something is your camera. So here's a short preview of the scene we are going to be working with. It's a simple plane that's been somewhat rescaled, a camera, and you can see a monkey for reference. The requirements for using adaptive subdivision is that your render engine needs to be set to cycles and the feature is set to experimental. So once you do that, two things are going to happen. First, in the render properties tab, you will find additional settings for subdivision. And second, when you add a subdivision surface modifier to your mesh, you're going to find this additional adaptive subdivision checkbox. So how do we actually visualize what it's doing? This is a clever trick that I found somewhere online but in the material settings of, in our case, the plane, we delete the principal BSDF, replace it with a wireframe, connect that to the surface, and then set the viewport to cycles because adaptive subdivision only works in cycles. Here you can see what it's actually doing. From this distance, it kind of look, looks like a mess, but as we zoom in, you can start to see where those subdivisions are. Now let's talk about the Dyson grade, which is one of the settings that you're going to find for adaptive subdivision. The Dyson grade refers to the size of micropolygons in pixels. And the way to think about it is that the higher the size, right, that the higher the Dyson grade, the larger micropolygons you're going to have, which means the fewer of them you can fit in a mesh. So it essentially represents the subdivision level, but in, uh, in the opposite direction, meaning that the higher the dicing rate, the lower your subdivision will be. You're going to find the settings for dicing rate in two different places. One is the render tab, which basically represents a global setting. You can kind of think of it like render samples, where you can set some value for the render and some value for the viewport, which tracks with what I said before, which is that the higher the dicing rate, the lower the subdivision count. Um, so that would explain why, by default, it is set to 8 pixels in the viewport, but 1 pixel in the render, because that means that in the render view, it's going to have a much higher subdivision count. For off-screen scale, we're going to get to that in a second, um, but even though the letters PX are not next to that value, off-screen scale is also represented as dicing rate in pixels. The second place you're going to find it is in the modifier tab for you know, wherever you added uh, this modifier. This is object specific and is essentially a multiplier of that global value in the render settings. So here you can see it visualized a little better. In the render settings, we have it set at eight pixels. And in the modifier, if it's if the dicing scale is set to one pixel, then it's gonna say, you know, final scale render one pixel, viewport eight pixels. But if we set it to two, then final scale for the render is gonna be two pixels and 16 for the viewport because, well, 2 times 1 is 2 and 2 times 8 is 16. So here is a simple way we can visualize this. What you see on the right is that exact plane that you've just seen, but from a top orthogonal view with the dicing rate set to 8 pixels, which is default and no dicing camera selected. We'll get to that in a second. And here, everything stayed exactly the same, except that I changed the dicing rate from 8 pixels to 64 pixels. One of the most important settings for this modifier is the dicing camera. Because remember, the name is Adaptive Subdivision Surface, which stands from the fact that it adapts to something, which is your camera. And so if you ignore this setting, you're not really getting the full benefits of using this modifier. Just a reminder, this is the plane that we are working with, uh, with no dicing camera selected. And here you can see that as soon as I switch, or rather, set the dicing camera to something, right? we have only one camera in this scene, you can see that the level of subdivisions on this plane automatically adapts to what the camera is looking at. And I can move this camera forward and it's not going to adapt right away uh, because it wouldn't be very memory efficient. But if I remove it and set it back again, you can see that now it updates and again it adapts the level of subdivisions around where the camera is. Now here is another way to visualize this. This is the exact same plane that we were looking at uh, just a second ago, uh, but the camera reverted back to its default position in the center. Uh, top orthogonal view, dicing rate, 8 pixels default, and here is the exact same plane with all the same settings except that the dicing rate was changed to 64 pixels. Now let's briefly talk about the off-screen scale setting. This represents the same concept of the number of subdivisions, 
um, except that it refers to those subdivisions outside of your camera view. So this is the default off screen scale of four. And here I increased it to 25. So you can see that the number of subdivisions where the camera is looking at more or less stay the same but the number of subdivisions outside of it decreased. Now, one of the most common use cases for this modifier that you're probably going to see um, is when people are creating some kind of a procedural terrain generator setup, like for mountains or sand dunes. And this is the base setup that they'll usually have going on. So they'll bring in a displacement node and plug in a noise texture to it. And when this material is applied to a plane, just like ours with the active subdivision surface, this is what you might get back. Now, for comparison, this is the exact same plane with the same material applied to it, except that it does not have adaptive subdivision, and instead it was just regularly subdivided a hundred times. And you can see it's quite a lot worse. And here is a side-by-side -side comparison. Now, at this point, you might be asking, why not slap this modifier on everything? There's a couple of reasons. Um, for one, animation artifacts. Uh, this does not work very well when your camera moves a lot. Um, if you want to have uniform geometry, this is probably also not the right place to apply this modifier. It might nuke your PC if the dicing grade is too low and your scene is very large. Um, baking textures is probably a no-go. And if you have a lot of stacked modifiers that are supposed to work together in a nice way, then this is also probably not the right place to use it. Where you might want to use this modifier is for what I just showed you, some kind of a displacement that looks nice. You know, static renders, procedural terrain, or large environment scenes where you don't really care about details outside of the camera. 